Welcome to Everyday Entrepreneurs Everywhere with your host, Chris Parker. And welcome back to Everyday Entrepreneurs Everywhere. This is Chris Parker, and I am having a conversation with Vinika van Aken, who is a mindfulness coach, and therefore a meditation coach, author, mentor, and has also been my meditation coach, which I have very much appreciated. And so I'm sure we're going to get into what is mindfulness, what is meditation. Um, Maybe I'll share a little bit about my imperfect practices and maybe get some tips and tricks along the way. So, but Vinika, thank you so much for joining. Can you share with us what is it that you do and why do you do what you do? Yes, I would love to. Thank you for asking me on your show. I love to be here and I love the first question because it's really something sometimes when you're just doing what you're doing, you don't really find the words. Uh, you don't give words to it. You just do what you do. So it made me think um, about what, what do I do? Because I kind of uh, yeah, fell into this path of mindfulness. I, I um, worked for more than 70 years in the marketing and communication industry. I was a consultant. And um, actually at the gym, I um, discovered yoga. And then that got me interested in uh in meditation because I found out that yoga also did something for my mind. And then I found this book uh, about mindfulness from John Kabat-Zinn. And um, I was really excited about this program, about this book. So I decided to, um, to study to be a mindfulness uh, a teacher uh, myself. Um, and that was more than you know, 10, 12 years ago. Um, so I started to be a mindfulness teacher and I started to, to, give trainings and coachings uh, next to my work as a communication advisor. Um, and then uh, I got the opportunity to, to really to make a career change. And then I really focused uh, uh, for 100% of my time on teaching mindfulness. So the mindfulness training that I teach, it's, it's, it's a program that's set up by John Kabat-Zinn in 1979 in the U.S., to help people uh, uh, to deal with stress in daily life. So, uh, so I thought, okay, that's what I do. I help people to deal with stress. But okay, so after uh, doing this for a couple of years, I, I saw a pattern in the people that came to see me, a pattern in their living situation, a pattern in the questions they had and the discussions they had. And then I realized it's much more about just dealing with stress. It's about really finding how, uh, how you want to live your life, how you can, can live happy and healthy in this crazy world. We live in such a challenging times and we just don't know it anymore how to live. We, we kind of lose, lost the, uh, the capacity on just to live and just to be happy and healthy because our mind is just stressed. It's just this world is just too much for our mind. So I realized with mindfulness, you learn how to calm your mind. And then the next step is to connect to uh, well, uh, your heart, your intuition, your gut feeling, or however you want to call it, and to listen more to that and to make the choices from your heart instead from your mind, because your mind is stressed. It's just only thinking about, because of the stress, about fight and flight mechanisms. And for the mind, it's not interesting to be, to be happy. So, because the mind wants you to be safe. And in this stressful time, the mind's always thinking about how can I be safe? It's not thinking about what do, dishes do I have to make to be happy? So I find that mindfulness helped me to, to, to have a happy life, to have a happy life in these challenging times. And then, uh, yeah, I, I want to share that. That's, so that's, that's what I feel that I'm doing to share the tools to, be, to, to learn more about how your mind works and how to be happy. And Does that make sense? <laughs> it, it has, and, it's, and it raises so many and you know, triggers so many questions. Um, before we get into, I guess, what is you know mindfulness in itself, um, I, I'd like to get into a little bit your practice because you actually have written a book that has you know basically your your framework or your method in it, and then you give private courses, group sessions. So um, based on this, taking it from managing stress to achieving a happier life how do you help people with that and so what, what is mm -hmm. the 
product or the, the you know, yeah. what is it that you do uh, with uh, people structurally, I guess? And then, and then mm -hmm. we'll go into what is actually, you know, mindfulness. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like what I said, um, it's really teaching people about how their mind works. And you can make it very complex and you can go to a surgeon or a neuropsychologist and all this good, you can all do, you can all do this research, but um, I just make it simple that, that, that there are just a few rules that how the mind works. The mind wants you to be happy. The mind is always focusing about problems. The mind is always fo focusing on how to be accepted by the social group. Um, the mind is focused on short-term satisfaction of needs. Um, and that doesn't always uh, bring you to the best choices. And it might make you uh, more concerned than you need to be. And that's the same pattern that, that just drives you and that drives you to make the choices that you make. So if you can see that, um, then you know, okay, this is the mind. It's just stressed. And you can say to your mind, it's okay, relax. Uh, we don't have to worry now. Um, and I know for my heart or for my intuition that I have to make another choice. But to get there, that's very complex because nobody ever tells you that in the Western society. So you cannot get there by telling it and by telling others like this is how your mind works because your mind doesn't believe it yeah it says no this is how i've always did it so you have to find your way how to how to kind of ignore the mind and to find your answers from your well intuition heart however you want to call it so it starts with learning meditation techniques and that helps you to calm the mind but there's much more that you can do and that you maybe also need to do because if your life is still really crazy, you're full of uh, activities and things to do, I and mean, your work piles is, is too much, then you don't have even time to listen to your heart. So you also have to do other things in your life and organize your life that way that you also have the time to do your practice, but also the time to listen to yourself. In, so time, it's, it's in your agenda time. It's also in your house, you have to make time. And you also have to make sure that your, your whole system, that your body, your mind is, is strong and, and, um, and is fit so that you don't have to worry about your health all the time, but that you can listen <clears throat> to what your heart says. So for that, I, so I've, I've written all of these insights in my book. I, can I show it? I'm really proud of my book and I nice. like the cover. <laughs> I love the yeah. color. Yeah. really stands out. Um, so it's really like a five-step program. I love five-step programs because it's, it's more than just sitting on your cushion and do your meditation. It's also what do you do with your insights on on what you learn from your meditation practice and what you need to do to take good care of yourself and make the right, right choices. Uh, and for those that aren't watching the video, um, if you go to metamind.com and that's M-E-T-T-A mind.nl, sorry, it's metamind.nl. And then towards the bottom, there is this beautiful red book called The Meta Circle in Dutch, yes. and it's available on bull.com in the Netherlands. And I will put links to all this in the show notes so you can look back there and get the, the five-step method. Um, what, what I, um, I, I think very wisely came to you for, for meditation um, coaching, instruction. Mm -hmm. um, we did one-on-one -on -one sessions. I would still love to do Corona sort of interrupted that. I would love to do one of these series of, of group uh, mindfulness uh, programs. It's still on my, definitely on my to-do list to do. Right. Um, I would recommend people to sign up for the newsletter and find out. And you have English versions in Amsterdam mm -hmm. as well as Dutch. Yeah. Um, so thank yeah. you for making that accessible to, to us uh, non-fluent, um, you know, uh, <laughs> Dutch speakers. <laughs> um, what, what, I hadn't realized with meditation um, connected to mindfulness is it's also related to the body. And so uh, yeah. a lot of the questions that, you know, you were sort of reflecting with me after we were practicing uh, meditation was, well, how did, you, how did your body feel that? Or, 
So can you explain a little bit the connection between the, the, the mind and the body in, in context yeah. to mindfulness? Yeah, um, well, it's, it's really nice that you point that out because people don't, don't realize that really when, it's, when you start to meditate, that it's so much about the body. And actually really what you do um, in, in my wording is that you really drop from the head into the body. And again, how that really works is very complex. And I really, am, I don't care. I just want to know how, how it works. Just practice it, get my instructions. Okay, this is how it works. And really, if we can prove it or if we can explain it scientifically, yes, I'm not sure if we would ever can. But I felt uh, what my experience is, and that's what I shared with you and with others, is that when you find this technique, Technique, this meditation technique that um, basically it's it's really focusing on your breath so that you don't you're not getting caught up in your mind you're focusing on your breath then you kind of drop from your head into the body and you sit and you just feel the breath you feel your body you f you feel your senses and being connected with your senses that helps you to ignore the mind that is so stressed and saying oh you have to call this you have to send this email you have to do something right now um, you can ignore it and you just sit and you, you feel the space. And then I don't know really where it comes from, from the heart, the stomach, where it comes from. But then you get these insights that, okay, I'm fine. I'm just sitting here. I'm, I'm healthy. I'm breathing. I'm fine. And, oh, and then you get these ideas. From, okay, this is an insight. This is what I need to do now. This is, this is just a worry from the mind. That's, that's what I can uh, ignore now. So it's the technique that helps you to not react on the mind, but just be in this moment, feel your senses, and then open up for whatever arises, ideas, thoughts, bodily sensations, whatever it is. And then afterwards, you can make your interpretation. And then it can help you further. So we need the mind to have an interpretation. So we're not, not going to ignore totally, but it starts dropping and feeling and being and being aware being aware and and um you just describing it is also sort of bringing me back to my own meditative practices the um my and and we started talking this before we pressed record but i haven't actually explained how i do it um <laughs> and and <laughs> or how i've abused the process <laughs> so what i try not to do in you you mentioned that you know it, you know, we manage our own time and space. And so what I really try not to do is schedule meetings before 10 in the morning. It's not always possible. Um, and get the boys to school and, you know, get out uh, in the morning. Sometimes, oftentimes I wake up early and that's where I do my sort of my, my quiet writing time, just because maybe there's things that came up in the night and I can just get on that paper um, and, and get it mm -hmm. out. And then I do my, my sporting. So, we, you know, converted the garage into a gym and I listened to Abraham Hicks, which is my sort of spiritual uh, reminder about abundance and positivity. Yeah. And, and um, so pretty much if I get, you know, 20, 30 minutes on the rowing machine and some, you know, body movement and some, you know, uh, you know, good morning, sunshine, stretching, get that, that whole thing going on. And then honestly, I jump in the bathtub. And so I'm usually in the bathtub <laughs> for 20 to 30 minutes with um, a guided meditation in my ear. Um, sometimes there's a cat on the shelf, you know, that if I happen to have a cat in the room, but lights off, just breathing. And what I, I often do, and again, this was something that, that you shared with me on how to do it, is when these thoughts come in, I don't rage against them. Yeah, I just sort of, right. oh, there's a thought. Hmm. Thank you. And then let it go. And that sort of, you know, allowing it to flow. And, and, and what, I guess the reason that I do this is to see what is it that I'm inspired to do that day? And also, how am I inspired to be that day? And so for me, I found that just setting up in this way of getting some creative movement out, moving the body, just chilling and breathing and connecting is, is um, for me right now is just a, um, a perfect way to start. But I have added the bathtub 
that's something that uh, <laughs> you, was not part of your original instruction. So uh, um, no, yeah. no, it's very good. Well, so we fi all find our ways. So yeah. it's, it's it's also whatever works. So I really love that part, mm. and and it's finding what works for you. So so for where you open up to this idea to, to go to the, mm. to sit in the bus stop. Mm. So so it's all about. Um, knowing and finding out what works for you. And I think we all know what works for us. And we all know how we want to live our li live our lives mm. and what we need to do to take care of ourselves. It's like we all are products from nature. So a tree knows how to grow. And a little puppy knows, knows how to become a, a, a grown dog or, or uh, birds know how to fly. So we are also the same. We're the same. We're also products of nature. But in this time when we kind of live up so much apart from nature, uh, uh, we're not connected to that anymore and we don't hear it also anymore because our mind is so much stressed because we live in this time that, that we're not made of. So it's about how to deal. So with meditation, you, you learn how to deal with those thoughts and nobody ever told, told us that. We're not taught how to deal with our minds. We're not taught about how to deal with stressful thoughts or with, with stressful emotions. We're afraid of our emotions. We want to push them away. We want to run away. Or, or we've had, when we have stressful thoughts, we start to fight it. And like just what you said, you learned how to open up for your thoughts, not fight it, but open and just let it welcome it. And then it maybe stays, but then maybe it goes away. And then you find much more space in yourself and there's much more information. You connect to much more information. There's, there's, and again, that's also something that I cannot explain what the source is, is of all this information, but it's inside of us. We get these ideas, where they come from, I don't know, but they're there. So you want to open up for that and that for those instructions. Yeah, I, I, again, nobody knows where it comes from, whether it's just spontaneously created it or if it's collective consciousness or, or who knows what, but... Um, and I loved what you said earlier that you don't really know how the mind works, nor do you care. And I think I'm sort of there as well, because what, I, what I've discovered is if I quiet my mind and, and you can never think about nothing, I think. So, you know, if you just quiet your mind and come close to yeah. you, meaning without the distraction of everything else, then sparks of intuition happen, you know, like insights and looking at things from a different way or, 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 and also appreciating it from, from someone else's perspective. Um, yeah, I don't know. You create this own inner safety to yeah. wrestle with things. And, and otherwise, if you're really just like in a go, go, go fight or flight that you might not normally have the, the time for. So um, I'm, I'm curious if when we met, I was, um, you know, I had tried some meditation apps and stuff like that. And, and basically was saying, I need expert guidance. You know, please get me started. Mm. How would you recommend that, you know, people who want to start this journey um, into mindfulness um, could make that first move? Yeah, good question. Because a lot of people start with, uh, with, uh, with apps, meditation apps. Um, and there's also so much available online, um, but it's it's quite hard to start meditation by yourself, what you also experienced, because you're doing something that is so uncommon and familiar for your mind. It's really um, you you um, uh, you you're not following the instruction of your mind, so um, and you're doing something which is also so it's quite unnatural. You open up for something that might be a bit uh, unpleasant, the, 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 the stress. And it's unnatural to open for something that's unpleasant. When, you, when, you, when a pan on the stove, when it's hot, it's painful. You, 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 pull, you push away, if you pull away your hands. So, so when something is painful, you don't want to be there. So, but with meditation, you really open up uh, for everything that's there, what is pleasant or unpleasant. And if you want to try that yourself with an app, um, your mind says, 
what do you mean opening up now? I'm just restless and, and I'm nervous and I don't want to sit still and I don't want to be quiet and open up for what's there. I just want some distraction. This is bullshit. <laughs> um, so when you have some personal guidance, just in the beginning, you don't need to have that all your life, but just in the beginning, then you get some help to see what your mind does and how your mind always is looking for a distraction and how your mind is looking for, for an escape and that your mind doesn't want to open for, for what's there because it's, it's maybe a bit scary to open up for what's really inside of you because you've never done it before. So you're like, ah, your mind doesn't want to do that. Your mind wants to be in control. I mean, you can never be in control, but that's what your mind is trying to do. So then when you have uh, more personal guidance, then um, it's easier to get to get some help to see those patterns and to see your blind spots as well. Because it's, it's so, so unfamiliar for the mind. It's like, like, like a fish doesn't know that above the water, there's a whole new world. So, but when you say mm -hmm. to the fish, oh, okay, there's a whole new world. So it has to be told. And it needs to experience. I mean, you can, right. you can tell the fish exactly. that, hey, there's a whole other world up there. And you're like, no, there's not. Um, <laughs> yeah. Until you pull it out and say, look. You're like, oh, <laughs> th this is something. So, And and um, I'm just going to go through the progression of, of maturity, I guess. Because if I'm not anymore a, an absolute beginner, but I'm, I'm basically a, a, a novice, um, what would be a logical next step for me to um, get just a little bit better, I guess, in meditation and mindfulness well good, a good question you, you mentioned the group training um and i really love this group training i'm teaching it now for more than 12 years and it's just a wonderful journey the eight-week program and you're there with the group and especially now in this challenging time with GoFit, it's really nice if you have a group i hope we can come together again and to follow an eight-week program um, so you also you meditate together which is also very powerful you hear experiences from other people on how, how, what, what they struggle with or how they learn how to meditate. And um, you, it's, it's also a motivation to have really daily practice for maybe 20, 30 minutes a day. So you really get into the process and you're really experiencing what it is. And then you come together weekly on a weekly basis um, and you talk about how did it go with your meditation practice and what the experience is. So then you can really learn in a group. And then it's, it's really about really doing it, doing your own practice. But that's the hardest thing, to continue with your practice. So I'm really pleased to hear that you go to your bathtub. <laughs> so, so because that's the most challenging, to continue with your practice. Because they, daily life, just everybody wants a part of you. All, everybody wants your attention. So really to say no, like, no, I'm not giving any attention to anybody else, not to my family, not to my partner, my children, not to the media, not to my work. But this is me time. It's really hard. So um, uh, what they say is what, what you need. What, what the Buddha said, this all, huh, the practice comes from Buddhism. What the Buddha also said to his monks, uh, said what you need is the Dhamma, uh, the Sangha and the Buddha. So the Dhamma, that's, that's like the education about how the mind works. How do you do with it? How do you react when you do it? When you have your meditation, how do you respond to when there is, there is um, restlessness, sleepiness, uh, irritation? So that's the Dhamma. The Sangha, that's the community. So, so find people that also meditate or, or connect to people that also meditate or at least are interested in the journey of, of awareness. And once in a while, find your own Buddha, your teacher that can help you to find, uh, to get insight in the patterns of your mind, which is mostly subconscious. And also that can help you to see your blind spots. And then again, then you practice again. You. And what, what I do is I go to, uh, once a year, I go to uh, weekly retreats. So it's meditation for, for uh, just one week. Well, just one week, seven days, just meditation, only meditation. You get up at six and you meditate until 10 in the night. And you have, of course, your breaks and your meals. So then, um, then you have really just one journey, one week of, of meditation. And that's really uh, a step deeper than... And, and, and it's, it sounds really challenging 
and difficult, but once you have your own practice like you have, you, it's, it's, you can do it. Everybody can do it. Yeah. Uh, maybe you've already a- answered my next question, but if you go from so- some sort of not, you know, intermediate to advanced and you, and you go to this, um, I noticed on your website, you also have yoga vacations. Um, is that sort of an advanced course or something that yeah. you could aspire to, or, or, you know, once you've been doing this for a while and you really want to sort of, I know it's not a competition, but if you want to go deeper mm-hmm. or, or go up your game, what would yeah. be the, what would be the um, sort of advanced level activities? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like uh, the retreats, the yoga vacancies, the retreats that are organized, um, they are a combination of, of uh, all the tools that I discovered that can help me to live a happy and healthy life. Um, uh, so in a retreat, you're there. It's also a week program. It's not hardcore only meditation. It's also a combination of yoga exercises and Ayurveda philosophy. And Ayurveda philosophy is a lot about food, uh, about lifestyle. Um, so it's a combination of meditation for the mind, yoga for the body, and uh, Ayurvedic food uh, for your whole system. And when you combine that, you, you have all the, you can you have a taste of all the different tools that can help you to deal with the mind, connect to your heart, and to make the right choices so that you can live a happy and healthy life. So, so it's, it's in line of my book. I show it again. Mm. <laughs> all the tools, everything that I've written in my book, is available on the on the retreat and if you're interested in just hardcore meditation then there's a lot available there Uh, i'm curious because you said it's sort of uncommon but what what i find in having a lot of these conversations with people um all over the world that I, i think meditation is is more common than we might think and, right. and, and some of the more, more, more successful and certainly more satisfied people that I know um, practice some form of reflection or meditation in their, in their own way. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm des- I desire for more people to yeah. have this sort of calm, you know, to get out of stress managing their lives and, and becoming more connected to yeah, what makes them more more satisfied and more joyful, more happy. Um, so I'm am delighted that I found you and mm. have stayed in touch and, and took those um, yeah. took those courses. And I'm looking forward to, um, yeah, participating after the Corona time on the group session. So, but I would look to loop back to the book and your business a little bit as we're starting to to wrap up a little bit. So you 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 mentioned you love the cover of your book and it is beautiful. What what is what did the book mean to you? Because like you you certainly invested so much into that. How was writing the book, you know, instrumental in the development of your business or in your craft or in your own satisfaction? Yeah. Um, hint, hint, I'm asking this selfishly because I'm working on my book. So I'm gonna okay. <laughs> curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did, cool. What did this mean <laughs> for you? And, and, yeah. and how did you go through that whole journey? Yeah, well, it's, it's funny that um, it started on a yoga retreat. One of my first ret- retreats I started at Bali. So I remember that I was having a conversation with the group at the dinner table. And I, was, oh, I would always just talk on and on and on about this philosophy. I can talk about this stuff for hours. And then there was one participant sitting, she was sitting next to me. And she said, you have to write a book about what you're talking about, about this. And I said, oh, okay, I have to write a book. But about what? Well, about this, about what you're talking about all the time. So that was a little seed. And um, then one of my uh, one of my students, she wrote a book, and she she introduced me to her publisher, and then he wanted to publish my book. And for me, that was a way of um, really putting on paper what I discovered from the moment that I started with my meditation practice. And what I disc- the, the tools that I discovered that helped me to come to a more satisfying, fulfilling life. And I think we all, when we get older, we want to help other people and we want to share what makes us happy. And um, that's also what I wanted to share because I see so much people struggling with, with, and the struggle starts in their mind. 
because they believe their thoughts. And I discovered, I didn't discover it, I didn't invent it myself. So I, so I was also taught um, the ways on how to deal with distress in your mind. And I just wanted to share that with people. I see it can be so much better. It, there is something you can do. You can have more control about your life. So it was just uh, this, this desire to share this with other people. And well, like I said, I can talk about this stuff for hours. So <laughs> my book was just so much information. <laughs> so my editor said, well, um, it's so much. You really have to, to see, focus on the highlights. But for me, after having done that and I just written down this, I put everything in a model and then it feel, felt in a way like, okay, done that. <laughs> it's, it's, I've done it. Now I can relax and I can lay back and, and I can just continue with my coaching and with my trainings. And, and really this mission was like mission accomplished. But of course, it doesn't end there. But of course, there will be, will be other missions now. Yeah, I'm. I'm definitely also on a mission, and it's and it's. I I can really um, understand the desire to give back and, and to help. You know, I think that's why many people write. Um, yeah. And also, what I find is it's also for me to challenge or or refine my own thoughts because I, I think if you if I just keep it in my head, it can keep quite blurry and it, which allows it to be more adaptable when I'm talking about it, but then to actually put it on paper. And if you read back, um, you know, you know, compare chapter three from chapter four and realize I'm actually using different terms for the same thing. Sometimes, you know, like, well, wait a second, what is my, what is my logic? What is the, how does this work? And so I'm really, I'm just having a lot of fun with that and uh, also looking forward to the moment when that will be done. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, and also, I, you know, and I, th I think in this in this spirit of, of mindfulness, I'm also not giving myself a hard time on it. So, yeah. you know, when I when I, you know, have time to, to write in the morning, honestly, if I'm not inspired to do it, I just don't, you know. But then, if I am inspired to do it, then then I get on with it, and and that yeah. and that I think creates the right emotional space for for creativity. So yeah. It's a challenge, huh? It's a, uh, for me, it was a challenge. The, the process it really goes with ups and downs, and I hear it from all writer, writers that it can be a struggle. And then there are moments that you, like you said, you're in a flow and you're you're so happy with the things that you write down. And, and also for me, it was was also something like I don't have to look any further. This was what works for me. This is my plan. This is what I want to share. This is how I lead my life. Mm. I don't have to study anymore. Well, of course, you know, you always learn for the rest of your life. But, but there was a more relaxation and more, more calmness. Like, okay, this is how I do it. And then from this, this calm, more calm state of mind, grow from there. And just continue with your journey. But, but not with so much uh, chasing, trying to, to realize something, to achieve something. But... Just live your life. <laughs> well, uh, talk about profound statements to end with. Stop chasing and just live your life. I think those are words we would all benefit from. So, um, yeah. Vinika van Aken of MetaMind, and that's meta with two T's, dot NL. And on the show notes, we will um, put the links to her book, which is in Dutch, and it's also available on bull.com in the Netherlands called the Meta Circle. Um, and yeah, I, while it's a bit difficult right now with Corona, when these group sessions come together, I would really, you know, celebrate people to reach out, maybe get on your newsletter, you know, and hear about when, um, but not too fast because I want to sign up myself <laughs> when the next <laughs> chance comes. So thank you so much for joining. Yeah, you too. Thank you for your work, you know, before in training and coaching and care, and also for jumping on here and sharing your vision and mission and, and, and how you help people. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I really love to be here and seeing you again and talking again, uh, talking about also my work. Thank you so much. That's a pleasure. Thank you for listening. Like and subscribe to the podcast on your favorite player and download the Simplicity Kit from ebullient.com.